Hello, this is the TradeSite Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap beginning for the week beginning Sunday the 12th of March 2017 and ending Friday the 17th of March which will be options expiration, quarterly expiration. We'll talk about that in a bit. So there's a bunch of stuff coming out this week uh, but let's look first at the dollar index which has been basically stuck right here for a month now. Not doing much. We actually had a day, maybe two this week, where none of our trades even triggered because the ranges uh, were so light. Uh, Euro dollar is basically the inverse of the dollar index. Nothing there. Uh, pound dollar. Look at that for the week. Just a very light. I mean, we'll we'll add up the total ranges for the week when we look at the intraday action. But you can just see from here there wasn't much there. Aussie dollar uh, did move a little bit better. The normal, but still only 130 pips for the week or so, 150. Pound yen has just been horrible. I mean, you're talking 400 pips for a month or something like that. Pound, Euro yen rising, trying to break out. We'll see what that leads to there. And I remember that 13 sell signal back in January was the top. Pound Swiss uh, also just drifting here. And the New Zealand dollar pair did have some movement. Uh, this last week. All right, let's look at the intra week actions. So here's 30 minute candles. Euro dollar high to low for the week was 180 pips. Remember, it usually trades 130 on average. And keep in mind that uh, if you just ignore the late, I mean, we wouldn't even be trading this late in the day. The last few hours on Friday added 60 of those pips. So without that, you're 120, 130 pips for the whole week. Uh, most of it was very narrow. A little pop on Monday, but basically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it drift down for about 80, 90 pips and then kind of drifted back up. Pound yen for the week, high to low is 160 pips. That's horrible for that pair. And uh, like I said, Monday was the big day. Tuesday had a little move. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we were stuck in, a, uh, in an 80 pip range for the entire three days, basically. So not much to say about the Forex market in terms of excitement. It's just not there. Let's take a look at the uh, economic data that's coming out this week. And there's a few things we have to note here. This is going to be an important week, I think, for Forex and for everybody. Uh, first of all, we get time changes here in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, that'll shift everybody so that we're not an, we're an hour off of what we've been with Europe for a while until they can get their time changes. So sometimes that affects trading to start for a couple of days. New Zealand uh, dollar uh, FPI and uh, New Zealand has their FPI at 4:45. Japan's got core machinery orders and PPI. Uh, we've got uh, tertiary industry activity out of Japan. Monday, uh, European uh, uh, Italian industrial production, labor market conditions index here in the U.S. Uh, we've got the NAB business confidence number out of Australia. Industrial production, fixed asset investment, and retail sales out of China. Tuesday, uh, German final CPI, zoo economic sentiment, industrial production out of Europe. Uh, UK 10-year bond auction, PPI out of the U.S., CB leading index out of the U.K., current account out of New Zealand, Westpac consumer sentiment out of Australia, new motor vehicle sales out of Australia, uh, revised industrial production out of Japan, also the start of a two-day Fed meeting. Okay, keep that in mind. So we go into Wednesday. This is the big one. So we've got French final uh, CPI. Uh, we've got PPI out of Switzerland. We've got Italian retail sales. Unemployment rate out of the UK, employment change out of Europe, German 30 year bond auction, Bank of England quarterly bulletin. Uh, we've got uh, here in the US, big one, CPI. So we would be half size anyways ahead of this because that's one of the big three each month. CPI retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing Index, business inventories, NAHB housing market index. An hour into the market is crude oil inventories. And then at 2 p.m. Eastern time, remember these hours haven't shifted yet because of the time change. So at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to have uh, the the uh, Fed rate announcement, and then the press conference 30 minutes later. So that's a big day. We'd be half size ahead of that, also ahead of the CPI. So uh, be careful with all that stuff coming out. Uh, that night, New Zealand's got the GDP. Australia's got the MI um, inflation expectations, and then employment change and the unemployment rate. Uh, Bank of Japan has got uh, uh, Bank of Japan and the monetary policy statement out of Japan. Um, we've got uh, Swiss LIBOR rate and monetary policy assessment, so essentially Switzerland's rate announcement as well. CPI out of Europe, uh, UK has uh, also a rate announcement, so rate announcements across the board this week. Canada foreign securities purchases, building permits here in the U.S., Philly Fed, unemployment claims, housing starts, jolts job openings, the weekly natty gas number, uh, Italian trade balance, uh, and then the European trade balance. G20 meetings start, 
and then uh, Canada's Manufacturing Sales, U.S. Capacity Utilization and Industrial Production, and uh, Preliminary Mi University of Michigan Inflation Number. A lot of data, especially in the back end of the week, it's going to be big, plus triple expiration, which does have an impact on Forex at the end of the week. So, whew, there should be some movement. You'd like to think this would get us doing something, probably a rated hike here in the U.S. We'll see. Uh, but again, Monday might be a little slow. The rest of the week a little more interesting. I'll be on the road Monday, Tuesday, and uh, it won't affect the Forex calls. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week.